everything. Chat. Okay. I'm going to give it a minute, y'all. Give it a minute. Hmm. Got chapstick. I'm all feeling ashy. I did chapstick earlier. Our weather's changing. So, if you come in, give us a like, thumbs up, share it out. Ooh, I have some. We went, I went out yesterday and I've had some. Oh, I do have chapstick. Y'all, I am butt tired. So if you come in, give it a like, thumbs up, share it out. Let me make sure I'll do that. I was out all day yesterday. I came in here. I think I ate. No, the week we went out for dinner. And uh, yeah, I'm butt tired. I'm going to give it about five minutes and then I'll be back in. I'll start talking. Oh, y'all, 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 yesterday was the day. Well, I'll talk now, y'all. Whoever comes in, give us a like, thumbs up, thumbs up, share it out. Just tell you I'm tired still. And then I got up this morning and, or this afternoon. Because I, I was up yesterday at uh, 7 in the morning. And I hung out with two friends of mine. One, she just moved back here. And, um... My other friend, they, they met each other for the first time. So I hung out with Linda and Regina. And they met each other for the first time. And we just kind of did a sister's day. Like, sisters, because we all black. And it was a very powerful... It was fun, but powerful. So I'm going to talk about how my brain works. And this is story time number one. So I'm probably going to do about three different stories. And all of them will, if you can follow it, will culminate to a point or the moral of the story is. And I wasn't sure if I was going to wait a while and do the story, but I'm just going to do the story because I think after my conversation with them yesterday, I'm one of those people that believe God leads you to talk about stuff because it helps other people. And it was very interesting. Uh, Regina, I've worked with both of these ladies at two different places. So I worked with Regina at Aetna and then me and Regina, I mean, me and Linda actually trained her at University of Phoenix. And then we ended up working together. When I got back here, I worked for the night company and they wanted to go back in and all other drama they had back in that office and share COVID. And I was like, I'm not sure in COVID. Plus I was really like work from home. So then Linda referred me to Carvana where I was at for a hot second with there. And then she got laid off. And then my mind ended as well about what a month after her, if that, something like that. Because they were still doing continuing layoff and letting people go. They was doing all sorts of shenanigans. They still are, from what I understand, from some people who were still there for a hot minute. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. For a hot minute. <coughs> and then I'm going to talk. Whether anybody comes in or not, I'll still talk. <coughs> but yesterday we hung out and... It was interesting. We laughed. We had a lot of laughing because we, because Linda's silly. <coughs> and then Regina, we, we always laughing, but Linda's a hotness. And Linda would have us cracking up. So we laughed and we initially went for brunch. I like a place called Postino's. And Joe and I had went a couple of weeks ago. Um, or several weeks. I can't remember when. It was several weekends ago. And they have an avocado toast. And I want to have it again. It was good. It wasn't the same as what we had the first time. It was good, but it wasn't the same. And my mind was on that avocado toast. <clears throat> I'm going to try to reduplicate the one they did the first time. But I could tell it just, you know, sometimes, as Linda said, it got a different cook in the kitchen. I don't know. It just wasn't as good. Uh, Linda had their version of French toast. And it was, looked amazing. I've had the French toast, but I don't remember the ice cream on top. I've done their French toast before, but they have. It's like they cut up the bread. They have all sorts of, you can see the caramel syrup and some sweetener on it. And then they put a big hunk of ice cream on top. And then they and then she was able to get bacon on the side. And then Regina, <coughs> what did she get? I got, oh, she got the panini sandwich and um, the soup. And the soup was amazing, like a roasted pepper soup. I forgot what was on top. Her soup looked good. It must have been good because she clicked. She that, that bowl. She cleaned that bowl. She enjoyed that. I could tell. Then we ended up going to um, my favorite coffee house here, which is called Fair Trade, and that experience was 
Well, we just went for the dessert, but she got a dessert. And I went back today to get it, and they were sold out. And they were lavender conchas, which conchas is like a Mexican bread, a sweet bread. And it had the lavender on there, and then it had a, she said like a white. It was really light because I tasted it, but it was so good. And then I went back today, and they were sold out of it. So I don't know if I'll get it hopefully in the next week or so. I'll go back, and hopefully they'll have it. And I went today, but they were sold out. It was packed. They had a little DJ in there, and I'm, I, I was going to the coffee house to chill, not to deal with the DJ, <laughs> not to deal with the DJ. Um, then I had a fall because I was sitting in this chair and the leg went, probably because I'm heavy, I don't know. But the leg went on it and, uh, she's like, oh, they, the chairs need to be gone outside. I was outside, so that was good. Um, I'm okay. But I was like, it was just, I was not supposed to be there, y'all. I was supposed to be. And when I went in to order, someone said, get your order to go. So I need to listen to the Holy Spirit of God when he's talking to me. And I didn't listen because I really had on my mind to chill. But when I walked in there, it was not chill mode. It was a bunch of kids. When I say kids, folks that were 40 and under, a lot of ASU students because I'm now by all the universities. ASU, NAU, U of A, all of them probably was up in there. Um, and the DJ was there, so probably half his people supporting him. And, he play, and that wasn't what I was in. I was in for coffee mode. I wanted chill. I wanted... I'm okay if it's some jazz. I'm okay if it's even electronic. I'm okay if it's lofi or lo-fi, whatever the heck you call it. I'm good. I just went into DJ mode, and there was a whole bunch, and it was packed. So then after the whole chair broke and thing, I said, make it to go. And so they made everything to go, and then I headed out, and I was like, okay, I need to get gas. And then I was going to stop real quick at the grocery store. And when I stopped the grocery store, one of my goals is they have a bulk olive bar at, well, they've had. I don't know what's going on lately. There's a bulk olive bar at my Safeway that's near me, which I don't like because, unfortunately, we're getting hit with a lot of heavy of the homeless. God bless them and pray for them. But the olive bar lately has been, like, not a lot of olives in there. And they usually have, like, olives. And I forgot what those little, they're like a red kind of fat kind of, they look like tomatoes, but they're not. It's like a pepper. And uh, they were, they had, like, a few of those. They didn't have all the olives because normally they'll have, Blue stuffed blue cheese olives. They'll have some that are um, a brine that has lemon in it. Uh, they'll have a peppery olive. They didn't have that. So there is another Safeway north of me that's really in a money area, and they have an olive bar like mine. I'm going to see. I'm going to go up there. They're not too far from me <clears throat> one day and see if they have it. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, so I'm doing that. I got homework later tonight. I've got to check up <clears throat> and see um, about the degree thing, because i got to notice about this degree thing. Um, i got to check up and see about my degree, because it looks like, so I don't know if anybody was on here. I don't hope I said it last time. i got so much going on in my head. I got a notice from, I go to Grand Canyon, I got a notice from them that they're doing a reverse degree program in conjunction with, the community colleges. I have, I don't know how many credits I have. I think I transferred over 20 some credits. So I don't know how many they took. I had probably a lot more than that, but they transferred. I can't remember how many credits they took from my uh, uh, Maricopa Community Colleges, which is a district college here in Arizona from me going off and on for years. Well, if you had 15 or more and you've achieved, I think 24 or more. Hey, Wendy, what's up? How's it going? I'm just rambling right now. Um, how's your weather? Cause it's chilly here right now. We've had a couple little cold fronts come through. Um, but if you achieve, I think it's 24 or more credits, they'll do kind of a reverse degree. So I can get my associates now, I believe based on what I was reading. So they sent me a letter because I guess I might be a candidate for this and I had to do an application and I uploaded that to their portal. So I don't know how it's being handled. I'll check in cause I just sent it last week or the week before last. And I don't know how long that process takes. So I'll check in with them probably sometime this week. And then I was supposed to be going for some more dental work. But they're trying to see on the 28th in the morning, I'm supposed to go for a cleaning. Uh, but they lost their dental hygienist and they have temporary dental hygienists coming in. So I don't know what's going to happen on 28th. i got to find out because I put in for the time off. But they're being quirky on that too. So uh, I can't um, because I'm trying to get ready to finish off my braces. Oh, y'all getting okay? Yeah, it's been, it, we, we've been cold for, today is cold, because I was out there, 
and um, it's supposed to, it rained, it sprinkled a little bit, but it's chilly outside. I'm and chilly in here because at first it's, it's like it's kind of schizophrenic weather. It's hot, then it's cold. It's cold and it's, it's, it's warming up, then it's cold. And it's cold and it's warming up. It's just been schizophrenic weather. Because um, yesterday, at a certain point, it got hot. Then today, it got cold. I'm like, what's going on? Because it's chilly right now. Um, but it's, it's not bad. It's not all that bad. Yeah. See, that's why this is where I would like to have not not driving trucks, but have like an RV or like where you had a truck with an RV attached. I would love that and just travel around the country because I love being in cold weather, traveling and just parking and enjoying like if it's raining, if it's snowing and then just parking, chilling and, you know, being inside, relaxing and releasing and decompressing and looking at something pretty. Um but right now, it's not, it's not all that bad. It's not all that bad. All right, we five minutes in, Wendy. I'm going to tell the story. I'm going to tell the story. So I named this My Quirky Brain um, and Story Time. So I'm going to be telling a series of stories. And over time, I want folks, if you can, put it together. I'm going to try to put it together at the end of the series. I can't know how many stories I'm going to tell to get the point across, but I think most people will get it. I usually say the way my brain works, our quirky brain, when I talk to people, and most people don't get it. And I do it for one of two reasons. One, if you do get it, what you'll understand about me is I'm very analytical. So I'm analyzing a situation. Um, I'm analyzing a scenario. I'm analyzing behaviors because it, as it, it tells me who you are. And I've always kind of been that way. It's just kind of tells me who you are and it also comes from what I come from so because my family was so jacked my mother and all that drama I don't necessarily trust folks right off and if you show me a side of yourself that raises flags I'm all gonna step back I'm gonna look at you and I'm analyzing um I won't be mean or evil or anything like that but I, I already know whether I want to jack with you or don't I'll be cordial but especially come from the Christian side I'll be cordial I'll let God deal with you but I also have when red flags come up, that can be whether it's a person, it can be a business, it could be a behavior, any of those things, my flags will come up. And if it's some behaviors, my flags really come up. If it's a story, I'm analyzing it. So did today story time. Hey, PJ, what's up? I'm getting ready to do story time. You might have to back up a little bit. So today's story time is going to be about, and, and all this is going to culminate into a series of stories to prove a point, to say a point. I can only be, because I'm sure folks might be watching. Hi, y'all. Um, but I can only say to a point. I can't give names of stuff, but you'll get the you'll get the gist of the story over time, okay? And it, it doesn't only point to this one entity. Actually, there's several entities that do this, and I've dealt with several entities that do it. But we're going to start with story time number one this week, and then I'll do a story time each week to build up to the overall point of everything and the question and the question and if any of y'all have run into it so back when i was driving truck one of the things that i like to do when i drive well even now i love talk radio i love listening to audiobooks i listen to music every so often mainly christian music but um get trying to get away from secular music but one of the things i love is i love talk radio i love audiobooks i like things that make my brain think so when I say my quirky brain, my brain is very, I analyze, I'm analytical. So I'm analyzing situations, analyzing, and I look at ways to do things and make things, things to make sense. Things don't make sense. It bothers me. And usually there is some logic to the things that are transpiring in this world. Okay. So let's uh, get into the story. So this is years ago. This is years. This is back when I was on a truck and I was listening to a, uh, a radio a radio show. And I believe it was on, they had a trucking channel on Sirius that you could listen to that would talk about different issues. But they also used to just have random stories, maybe health-based stories, things like that. Now, I'm going to back this up for a second and put a pin in that. When Grumpy was alive, me and him had talked about medicines, that you would see these commercials. And the commercials would say, oh, um, you know, you got this medicine that will come out, new medicine, and there'd be 18,000 things that were wrong with that medicine, that they said side effects, okay? It's supposed to help you grow a toe. I'm just being sarcastic. But if you take the medicine, you could lose a leg. I mean, it would just, I mean, I'm being sarcastic. 
but it would just had this like weirdness to it. And, and Grumpy said, you know, I ain't never seen back in the day when we were, they didn't come out with all this stuff. The medicine's supposed to help you with this, but it causes 5,000 other problems, right? So I remember, now I'm going back to the truck. I'm in the truck and I'm listening to this talk show. So for those of you who know, I'm on a blood thinner. I've been on a blood thinner since I was 29. It's not about my weight. It is a hereditary thing. So I started my blood thinner before I was ever big. Um, I had my first blood clot battle at age 29. I have a cousin who's no longer with us. Her first one was back in high school. Her mom, who's my great aunt, she had one. Well, she had several, but the one hit the brain and had that brain surgery, and she lost eye sight in one eye. And then countless of it is off and on. Is on my father's mother's side that, that comes from. Um, like almost every other person has gotten hit with it. Um, and I didn't I didn't have my bout until age 29. Okay. So I got cousins, male or female, doesn't matter if you're female or male, that have run into the issue. Um, we're very familiar with them and they're not front fun and they're dangerous, right? So I'm I'm listening to a talk show on this radio station. And the talk show is talking about, at this time is back when a lot of the new blood thinners came out, Eloquist and all these other ones. Now I'm on the traditional, original one that I know of, which is called Warfin. Warfin has been around for years, years, okay? Then they came out with these newfangled ones. However, in this talk show, when they were talking about all the new ones that were coming out, one of the things that happened is if people started having internal bleeding or stuff like that, they couldn't get it to stop. So apparently there is something they can give you for warfarin to get you to thick for your blood and stuff to thicken up. It's still dangerous, but there's things that they did do to help your blood thicken up, so forth and so on, okay? Whereas the new drugs, they didn't have that. So the gentleman's talking about, he's using this as an example, and he says, you know, it's really weird to, to, to Grumpy's. All these companies are coming out and they have all these side effects and they still, and so one of the talk show person on their interview and says, you know, I always wonder this. We see these drugs come out. They have all these side effects, yet these companies still push the drug. And I, I don't understand. And I'm not knocking Eloquist because it does. I have, I have relatives that are on it. I don't know if they've improved their stuff. I have no idea. I know, I think Trucker Bill is on Eloquist. My aunt is on Eloquist right now. Um, she had a couple of blood clots. I think hers are mainly because she's older. This is on my mother's side. So, you know, they're on these, these blood thinners. I... And I told her, my view, I'm sticking with Warfin. I'm sticking with what I know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, Warfin has its issues. It does. Um, one of the things, and I don't know if it's either lighter pigment or not, but I remember I went, had an emergency room visit for a situation, and the lady says, you're on Warfin. She said, how long have you been on? She says, your skin is good for that, you know, for being on lungs. Because basically my understanding is Warfin is, it's made from rat poisoning. That, that's basically how it's derived. Okay, and it does something with the skin, thins it out, and some other issues. <sighs> Let's get into this further. So I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to this show. Most interesting conversation to me. And the man says, well, he says, what it is, and the guy says, you know, they're going to have these companies that do this stuff, they later end up with these class action lawsuits. And he says, yeah, he says, but you have to understand the mind behind it. Here's where it gets interesting. He says, so you come out with a drug. The drug is supposed to do X, Y, Z. And, and this is only drug company, so I want y'all to broaden your scope. I'm talking to drug company because this was a story. But broaden, again, I analyze everything. You got to broaden your thinking on what they're saying and read between the lines. Don't focus just on the drug. Focus on the strategics I'm about to talk about. So the guy says, yeah, he says, they'll come out. And they'll come out with these drugs, they'll do all these crazy things, and the drugs will have all these side effects. And eventually, they might get in a class action lawsuit. So you're right. So the interviewer says, he says, well, see, it doesn't make sense. Why would you do that knowing that you eventually are going to have to pay, you know, probably millions or billions of dollars to people for, you know, the side effects or any negative effects that your drug is causing over doing good? Wait for it. So the guy says, well, let's look at really how they're looking at the situation. Wait for it. And I've got some recent things that made me go, this is exactly what's going on right now with something I got around me. So 
he says, look at it like this. The company is willing to take that risk because in, rest, in essence, the lawsuit ain't nothing to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was like. I'm like, what do you mean lawsuit ain't nothing? That's money going out the pocket. Follow the bouncing ball. He says, I want you to think about it this way. You get sued and you have to pay, let's say, $200 million. He says, but you've made billions off the drug. What's $200 million? Follow the bouncing ball, y'all. So let's back up. And I'm, I'm trying to help y'all get this because my other stories are going to come into play. Think of yourself. You're doing whatever you do in your life. And somebody comes and sues you for, let's say, $100,000, but you got a million. What's $100,000 in the grand scope of a million? You got 900000 some odd dollars left. 100000 don't mean nothing to you. It's a drop in the bucket. It's chump change. It's the cost of doing business, and you really don't care. So let's put a drug out that could be anything. Let's think of, uh, what's that, Viagra was one, and it has some side effects that men could have if they take it. That's another one, because that's really the one that Grumpy was talking about, right? Because um, when he had his prostate cancer, you know, he still wanted to be doing the other pastime. And so you talk about that, and it has all these side effects, and it's later on, if they see something, they could actually come back and they could sue, okay? We do this class action suit. But whatever money they got to pay out is really no big deal to them because I can create or I can do a behavior that might get me in trouble. But I'm going to continue in that behavior because in the grand scheme of things, I could make 900000 or Maybe I make a million. I make 900000 and all I do is I lose 100000 I still profited huge. Book whoop on the 100000 It's just chump change. It's cost of doing business the way I want to do it. The slap on the hand is really irrelevant. They don't care. They don't care. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to use an example, and I'm going to get further into story time, but I'm just going to kind of get y'all mind on it because I've got more story time later to tell y'all. So I worked for a company that started online, the online schooling process. Genius idea. I, it's genius. It's matter of fact, it's so genius that it, it has affected universities across the country. It's how I'm getting my degree right now is because it, was impact, it impacted it. The sad part was they originated it. They, they, this, this, the place I worked, they originated it. The online school program, at least they were the ones that you knew in the forefront who were originators of this process. And, and people started adopting it mad and, uh, left and right, okay? Different schools because they saw they hit a niche. They, they hit something a niche. The problem, which has affected them, they're still in business, but they have definitely had some huge impacts where they're not doing business as well as they used to, okay? And I worked for them. They couldn't get away Better yet, they wouldn't get away from their sales tactics. And in thus doing, it impacted them in what's called their accreditation. One of the reasons I left, because they couldn't, the accreditation was in flux when I was there. It impacted their accreditation, and later on, there was some government involvement that actually really impacted them. But they wouldn't stop doing the sales tactics because ultimately, end of the day, they were looking at, it's the cost of doing business. We can just do what we want to do. And so we lose a little bit here. They're still in business, but ultimately it did impact them bigger, but they refused to change. And they were okay with the uh, tactics in which they used in order to try to continue making a dime. Now, eventually it did hurt them and they almost, I know they had to lay off a huge amount of their staff. Um, I, they almost went under, they finally sold off the group that had it before had to sell it off. So the school's not under the same ownership because it was, uh, uh, 
it was a pro for profit school. So they're not under the same ownership they were originally under. So I think it's a smaller company that has them now. They're still here. Um, they still operate, but it ain't what it was. And it amazes me when you get businesses that are like this, but it doesn't. It doesn't. That you do tactics that aren't good. Okay. And it's always, it's almost always a game. It's always a hustle. And you're just like, wow, why, why do you really want to go down this route? But everybody who does that, you know, it's about the buck. It's not about the people. It's about the dollar. And sometimes you do stuff. And the sad part is you can look at other companies who've done similar behaviors and refuse to get away from those behaviors and they stay in the madness. And you see the repercussions of it, but hey, we see us making 900000 and only use, losing 100000 if we have to sue XYZ or if we're sued or if we even have anybody, if we get in trouble. This is not a good thing at all. So I wanted to kind of talk about that because I'm going to do another story time and keep building two different stories. But when you look at places, whether you work there, whether you shop there, whether you do banking there, and you see that they refuse or they're doing things and it just doesn't make sense, and you're like, whoa, you know, it's not the most ethical move. And all you can say is, for them, it's not about ethics. It's really about the bottom line, which is the dollar. And that's not good. But, in my words, do you, boo-boo. Do you. PJ, what's the weather like? That's my story time. If y'all didn't catch it, y'all can go back. Anybody who looks at this later, go ahead and give us a like, thumbs up. You can comment below. What's what's your uh, what's your weather like there, PJ? And how's it hanging? If you're still here, and I hung out. Oh, oh, oh. I hung out with um, Regina and Linda yesterday. We went and we had a really good time. Uh, it was three of us. It was we call it the Sisters Day because it was everybody was African American. Everybody black. And Regina had just gotten back here, um, and I knew she needed to get away from, away from the grandbabies. Got folks, you know, that was initially not doing too sick and the stuff. And so, um, or not, yeah, so she needs to get away because she's got a lot going on in the house, and she's trying to settle back in here. And then Linda, I was like, come on, Linda. And Linda don't like to get up early, but we, we had a good time. And then later on, we ended up actually spending the whole day. It was only supposed to be brunch. And then we ended up, Linda had to go home, go get her daughter, because the one daughter doesn't know how to drive yet. We got to pray on that baby. Because uh, she's 23, don't have a drive yet. Rain and 55. Okay. Well, 55. Well, that's a little chilly. Not bad though. But I love rain. I love for it to rain. We we had sprinkles and we had clouds. It wasn't too too bad today. Yesterday we went, it was it was to me it was a nice day yesterday, but it was a little warm. And after we got through doing brunch, then we went to the stores, we went to a couple of grocery stores. Well, we went and went to the coffee shop, then we went to Initially went to the Middle Eastern store. Then I took or I took Regina home so she could drop her stuff off. Then we went to one store, the Basher store. I think I told y'all about because they had asparagus on sale for ninety nine cents a pound, something like that. And I like asparagus. I sauté it with uh, lemon pepper, garlic, olive oil, and then I squeeze fresh lemon on it. Love that. So I'll be making that here tonight, and then. Um, we dropped Linda off so she could get her daughter. And then we took Regina home because she had gotten a whole more groceries at Bash's. And then I took her home so that she could then um, drop her stuff. And then Linda was like, come back and get me. Let's, what are we doing for dinner? <laughs> so we ended up going to have dinner and we had fun. We went to a Mexican restaurant Regina had not been to, but I, I introduced Linda to it. And I just, and, and Regina like, wherever you want to go, because I know it's going to be good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So we ended up going and having Mexican food at one of my favorite places here in Arizona. They have best green chili burritos. And one time I think we're going to do a road trip down to Tucson. I'll see if I can rig the camera and film that uh, in the car. And it's just, Tucson is about a two-hour drive from here, from Phoenix. 
and just south of here. And um, they have now. I'm not. We're not going to go to this this particular. Cause I've been there, but it's been years ago. They have what's supposed to be the oldest Mexican restaurant in the nation in Tucson. But there's another one that a Native American uh, Christian sister of mine put on my Facebook that I want to go to. They do the fresh guacamole at the table. And um, I want to go down there. So Tucson has some very, supposedly some very good Mexican restaurants. Mark Weiss, Weiss had come. And I know he went to a couple of taco stands on the way down there. So we're going to do a road trip. Um, I originally was going to do it with Joe. And I love Joe. But he wants to drive his car. And Joe is starting to have what I call age driving. But also he wants to drive his car. That's showy thing. I, I can't. <laughs> and I want to drive my car because I like to drive. And I want to see how he does on the road. Um, no, it's not a Range Rover and I'm not, I'm over that. I don't care about that. Um, was well, never over it. It just didn't matter to me. Um, but I want to drive Little Man Hulk and Regina and Linda are like, we're okay. We ride a Little Man Hulk with you down there. So, you know, Linda like, no, you, you gonna drive. I'm like, okay. And we love Joe. We do. But he, it, he is really caught up in its status of that car and it's okay. I, that's his journey, not mine. And we're, and no, we, the three of us don't really care. We, <laughs> we all like, Hey, we just surviving, you know, all our cars are used. None of them are brand new. Um, you know, and, and we're not caught up in that. We're just on to ride, listen to some music, talk and laugh. It's not about the, the car. It's, it's not about all that. We don't care. So we're going to do a road trip. Um, maybe we'll do a different one with him. But initially, it's still going to be probably the sisters going because, you know, he will. Because when I told him what I was planning on doing a couple of weeks back, I, I want to drive. Ugh, here we go. <laughs> like, And I was like, well, no, I'm going to I want to drive a little man. No, I can drive, you know, and he, he then he's going to talk about the size. That's not what that was. Yesterday, we rode around and had a good time. Now, if he wants to drive and take another friend and follow us, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I want to drive. I, I driving. One of the reasons I had trouble because I love driving relaxes me. It's peaceful to me. Um, it's very peaceful to me. Um, so that's why I like to drive. And yesterday, because I drove all yesterday, and Linda's like, she's like, you just are relaxed. So I relax when I drive. Driving, and if it was a road trip, oh my God, I'm so relaxed when I drive. It is the most, that's what I said. For me, if I retired, give me, if I come to the right kind of money, give me a trailer and give me a truck. Or give me an RV that has the, you know, the connection on it. I drive that puppy till the wheels fall off. And then just park, have me some dogs, some fishing poles, and some cameras. And just go fish, camp in my RV, grill them if I want to. I'd be just as happy as a lark. That relaxes me. I don't need a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, I wasn't going to be on here too terribly long. I'm trying to think what else that I had. But when I say my brain is quirky, as I mentioned in this video, it's just because I'm analytical. Um, some people will try to maybe make that something it's not. And they'll go, oh, you're this or you're that. No, okay. Oh, is that what you were really thinking? I'll just play right along with you. Okay. It just has to be I analyze situations. And I also, um, which Regina brought up yesterday, she says you're, you have like a mom characteristic, which is probably from raising my brother's. So people will try, they'll come and it's like, um, they need to be nurtured. They need to be ministered to. And that's, we talked about that yesterday because Regina, when she said she was talking about it and then Linda was saying, yeah, she said, they think I'm, they think I'm Shannon at the other job I used to be at where she's at. They think I'm you because they'll come up there and they'll start talking. They tried to talk to me and then they just realize I don't, I said, I'm there for my page to get away from me. And Linda had me rolling. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I just come get my, because you guys are all weird. <laughs> and I say, granted, there, there's some different stuff up there, but some of those people are really just broken. And so, yes, they would come and I would talk to them about the Lord if they, if that door opened. Um, uh, one of them, uh, she had said to me, you know, I'm thinking about going to church. Well, if it opens, I don't sit in because it is a work environment. I don't push my belief system. But if you open that door, we're going to talk because you brought it to my table. I didn't bring it to yours. Hey, Delphi, what's up, baby? How you doing? How's your weather? How's Ohio? Hold on. Is it Delphi, Ohio? Delphi? Yeah. You're Ohio, right? Columbus? Thank you, Columbus. Talk to me. I'm good. I'm fluffy grandma getting old. But yeah, I, I, uh, we, we had, a, it was a, 
a good, yeah. Oh, Indiana, my bad. Hold on, who's who's Ohio? My young, where's my baby from Ohio? The little sister that was gonna go to uh, to Swift Tracking School, and it changed. That's funny to me. And she she had to throw on the peace sign. Ah, it is okay. Okay, you girl mess with my look. Don't mess. You know, Fluffy only think Fluffy Grandma can only think so much. Don't work the brain too hard. Okay, got you. Got you. Got you. All right. Yeah, I've been through India. Indiana's a trucking town too. Y'all got y'all got some truck stops. I India's okay, but I think it's just because I always went through the area. I mean, it's green, but I always went through the areas that were. The trucking areas, which were the more industrial, and that wasn't the prettiest. But you could tell it's green and probably in the right areas. It's nice. But I was in the trucking lane when I would come through there. So it was always okay to me. Um, it wasn't anything, you know. But weather-wise, it's not bad. It's not bad. It was It's green, but it was okay. I think it's because I didn't get to go. Like, I think you guys probably got lakes and stuff out there, and I would love. Like I said, I would love right now. I know that's my thing. I need to retire and do that. I'm going to be, I'm getting ready to order a garden bed through Walmart for the back. I've been looking at several. I think I found one. I got to go through a measuring tape and I got to cut weed. Well, I do have weeds, but technically the weeds aren't the big one. It's those flowers, whoever was here before me, that are annoying uh, planted. And I'm going to have to get out here. Good thing I kept some of the boxes because I'm going to take the, well, I have some of the, what do you call that, cloth? The weed fabric, I'm going to put some of that down and I'm going to put the boxes over the top of it. Then put the new garden bed on top. Um, I need to get some wood because to not use so much soil, you can put um, logs in there. So I'm going to do that. The log will basically um, decompose over time and it adds to the soil. So you're using almost like a forest type um, fertilization. And I forgot what they call it, homoculture. It's something... It's a gardening technique, and I forgot the name of it. I know it starts at H, and the wood decomposes. So it's making it almost like the floor of a of a forest. So the, the forest does well because the trees decompose. There's a lot of decomposing material, which gets you into um, kind of like a natural compost. So I'm going to probably go, there's a couple of spots around here you can go get. Uh, wheelbarrows of firewood. I'll probably put some in the garden and put some on the side for smoking meats because we're coming up on the summer months. And so I'm going to do a bed there. Um, I need to get my sweet potatoes going because I've got some, what they call, where it's growing up. You can just, I, some people bury the whole, the whole sweet potato with the stuff growing off of it. I just break those off and plant them in the dirt. And those that survive are great. The other ones will decompose. And I have got, I had sweet potatoes one time did good. Only issue, I didn't get to try any of my sweet potatoes because they're supposed to cure outside. Big mistake. In Arizona, don't let them cure outside. It gets too hot. They started cooking. And before I knew it, my sweet potatoes were mashy because it was so hot out there. So this next go around when I do it, I'm going to go ahead and bring them in and let them cure in the house. I won't ever let them cure outside here in Arizona. It get too hot. They were like, they was baking outside. And before I realized it, it was too late because I don't know how long they would sit out there and so you don't want to eat them. But um, next time, I will do it in the house. In the house. Nope. But I got homework tonight. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to do a little refrigerator clean. And like I said, I'm going to do, um, I think I'm doing asparagus, asparagus tonight. They have broccoli on sale too. And then they also had chicken breast on sale. So I got that. And then at the Muslim restaurant or the Muslim grocery store, the Middle Eastern grocery store, they had halal chicken legs. So I'm going to probably take those. And I had got old school. I don't know how many people used to like this. I don't even know if it's any good anymore. Old school shake and bake. I used to like the old school shake and bake when it first came out. And I've got a couple of kits up there. So I'm going to use one of them for the legs. I think and do them in the, in the foodie, in the ninja foodie, which is my, it's a pressure cooker and a air fryer. So I'm probably doing an air fryer and do those legs. And then the chicken breast, I'm probably going to cut one of them up, freeze the other one and marinate it for like a stir fry with the broccoli. And that'd probably be what I eat over the next couple of days. And then I went and got gas today. Oh, how many of y'all heard of kolaches? 
um, they're like a soft bread with a sausage or hot dog in the middle. They finally have them here in Arizona. I have never, I've had them outside of Arizona. And actually my first introduction was back when I was in trucking. And uh, the truckers, we got, they got so much food. It's not good for you. And that's the first time I ever heard of it. Um, but kolaches are a bread with a with a with a, a sausage in the middle. We have one here, and I just went to one of our little places and found out they had them, and uh, they're really good. And I was like, I saw. I'm like, wait a minute, they got kolaches. I have not not in Arizona. I think yeah, I think they have them in Texas too now. That's not where I got introduced to them. I thought I got introduced to them up in like one of the states with the Amish country, um, I call it Amish area. So. Anyway, y'all, I am not going to be on here too terribly long. Let me know if y'all, how y'all doing, what's going on with you guys, if anybody talking. If not, I'm going to get off of here because um, I'm not doing too much today. Um, like I said, I'm going to get up in that refrigerator. I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> get my fridge refrigerator uh, scheduled out. I got some homework to do later on here. And then I'm going to pass out. i got to work this week. And I may have to have some teeth stuff done. I'm getting all prepared to finish off my braces. So i got to do a cleaning. And then I've got to set an appointment where she's going to come in and start working on that part of it. I'll be doing another more another story time uh, next Sunday. And I'm building up to a point. Some of it I've shared right now, but it's going to be more and make it clearer. But oftentimes, y'all, be careful when you're interacting with business. I have them on here. I just didn't finish them. So now I'm going to finish them out. So I've got, I've got them on my teeth. I just never finished them. When I went into trucking, um, the dental stuff, and some of their benefits aren't the greatest. So I never did finish it out. So now I'm going to try to finish it out. Because I need to after they pulled, they pulled my lower bottom wisdoms. And uh, my top two had already been gone. And then I also have um, spacing that's happening and uh, to prevent more shifting and more root stuff going on, I need to finish it as my conversation. The dentist I have, Joe actually recommended, he's actually very, very good. They're not only a dentist, but they also do cos <laughs> cosmetic dentistry, which is amazing. Because if you see the fillings, my teeth look, he went in there and itched and did and bite. And I was like, oh my God. Because I had, when I first, when I first went to them, and they helped me with some feelings. I said, I said, Joe, are they cosmetic dentists? Because it was, when you sit in the bathroom, you're looking at a tooth like, dude, they made that look like a tooth. Like, they just sent it out for, you know, it's not even dentures. This is, they, they took some filling and they did the divots. Like, I'm like, what the hell? Who is this dude? And they're very, very nice. Even when he took, because um, when I, and, and actually even when I had to do the teeth removal, so because of the whole blood thinner, normally the saga I go through with blood thinners and dental work, it's it's like, it's saga. I was like, yeah. But I, and he says, no, you don't have to come out for your stuff. I have a solution to where you don't have to come off your blood thinner. I'll check with your Coumadin clinic. It used to be when I had to have dental work, even just the cleaning. Because they have to make sure you don't bleed because everything gums will bleed very easy and just keep on bleeding. I would have to come off of my blood thinner. I'd have to do an injection or something through my gut called Lovenox to make it so that I wouldn't form a clot. Then after they got through dental, doing the dental work, I then have to bridge back to my warfarin. I'd have to go through multiple labs on a continuous basis until I got back to the thinness level of my, it was a saga. And it just, oh. So he had a solution or technique. The guy's good. He says, we're going to do bone marrow. So, girl, it's saga. So he did bone marrow. At first, I didn't know it was bone marrow. He said something about blood and stuff. And I was like, okay, I, I know what he's going to do. But when I got there for the process, she's like, oh, we got to do bone marrow. I think they'd take bone marrow from me. Wait, pump the brakes, homie. No, they actually take your like some of your blood and mix it with, I guess, blood marrow they have there. I don't know all the details. He then, after he got the tooth, which now that was something because I was awake, but I'm cheap, so I didn't ask to be put to sleep because <laughs> it was cheaper to be awake and give them a bunch of needles in my in my mouth, which was painful because I it, it had me jacked for a couple of days. I ain't going to lie. 
but I didn't have to go through the blood thinner drama. I, they did it a different way, but it still, it worked, but I did have to have stitches. So he mixed, they mixed my blood with some bone marrow after they crunch, pull and all that madness. And I had to have a lot of shots because I'm lucky. That's facetiousness. I have other nerves. Some people have nerves underneath, I guess, back here. Others don't. So you may have extra nerves. Some people have like, sir. So when he went to go do some of it, he says, some people have these extra nerves. Let's see if you do. So he, when he started pulling on too, he says, do you feel any pain? I was like, he's like, oh, yep. You one of them people that got them nerves. And so he starts shooting and he hit one. I thought my eyes going to cross. He says, well, it looks like we found them. <laughs> it was like, it was, it was, it was special. So then when he said, you're going to hear, you're going to feel pressure. And he says, you're going to, you're going to just let me know you're not feeling pain. He says, you'll feel pressure. And then you're going to hear a crunch. Exactly what he did. He wiggle, wiggle. He twisted and you heard crunch and pulled a tooth out. And the girl who's helping him, she's new to his office. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> Look how, it wasn't easy what I felt. But what she's saying is how smooth after he got it to crunch. He just pulled the tooth right out. He did both of them. So then he had to pack them. <laughs> right? Girl, you should see my face when they talk about the bone marrow. She talking about, um, she goes, yeah, we're going to do something with the bone marrow. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We ain't talking about no bone marrow. I thought she talking about taking the bone marrow from me. No, homie, that's some painful stuff right now you talking about. I'm already got to get shots all in your gums. and all. It was drama, but not the drama I used to go through. But he was really good. But because of the blood thinner, he immediately started having to pack stuff. Well, which side was it? I'm trying to think which side was it. Oh, I'm sitting in the chair. This one. This one was gushing. It was gushing blood because the blood thinner. It was squirting. He's like, oh, we got a squirter. And he started packing in all this cotton to get it to stop squirting while he was trying to get the bone marrow in on this side. Cause he had to put, he pulled them back to back, cause you don't want the novocaine and stuff to wear off. And this one was gushing, so he had to pack it with the um, with the cotton, cause it was just it, blood was just gone, cause of the blood thinner. And so he packed this one down, and then he started stitching while this one over here was she was doing her thing, and he needed it to slow down, cause he had to pack the blood in there. So I had to, it, it was it was a little bit of a event. And so he got the stitches over here, which he had problems with stitches on this side, but he finally got them. And then the stitches on this side weren't as bad. It was the gushing that was the problem. So he got it packed in finally with the bone marrow, which slowed down the gushing. And then he started sewing in and he had to do the stitches because the bone marrow, it would have went up. And so they wanted to keep it packed down for the healing process. And I guess that also helps with the clotting plot process. It was very interesting. I was like, because he, he did a technique that had never been done with me. Because when I had my top two taken, I was knocked out. It wasn't fun, but it wasn't nearly what I went through as far as pain-wise here. So pain-wise here, it sucked. It sucked. And, and it was <clears throat> not immediate, but you definitely felt it afterwards. And that's when... Um, I got that Advil he told me to do, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, if you could find a combination. And I went to Safeway, and that's why I got introduced to the safe, to the, it's Tylenol, it's a Advil, it's an Ibuprofen Tylenol mix. Because I guess the Ibuprofen helps with inflammation, and then the Tylenol, both of them help with pain, but the Ibuprofen really helped with the inflammation. And so I did that, and it was actually for back, but it worked really good for the pain and inflammation I was having up here. And then they had like a medicinal wash I had to do. And then I had um, a gel I had to put in there. I Like I, I slept for like, I, once I got home and got everything, I because you couldn't do anything, they want me to do popsicles and mainly cold. They didn't want me doing any heat the first day for 24 hours. And so I had to do, I could have popsicles. I think I did a popsicle and then I was out. I slept a good chunk of the day into the next day. Um, other than to get up, pee, and drink something cold. That was it. And I went right, laid back down. Um, but I was down for, I think, a couple of days. It was, yeah, yeah. So we got that done. And so now that's got to finish up the braces. That's it. And that's going to be my next move. But right now I got to see, because like I said, they, 
they lost a dental hygienist, so I don't know how they're going to work it. I'm supposed to be in there on the morning of the 28th. We'll see. I'm waiting to hear from them on Monday. Ooh, anyway, y'all. Yeah, Delphi is not your friend. Did, you know, there's two places, and I was telling somebody about this, two places that you do know, three actually, that are probably the most painful when they work on your body, your mouth, your fingers, and your feet. Them are not your friend. I think I can handle other places, but your mouth, your fingers, and I'm going to say your feet, your toes. Your toes. Anyway, y'all, we are at 50 minutes. Um, I hope y'all are having a good time. Oh, I did go see, let me say, I did go see the movie Dune. I don't know if y'all like that kind of stuff. I'm a sci-fi person. So I finally went and saw it. Um, I went, was it Friday? Friday after work. I, I just, I wanted to get out. I needed to decompress. And I love sci-fi. Sci-fi is one of my big ones. I saw the original Dune movie with Sting. And for those of you who are around my age, y'all remember it. This is a new version of the Dune. And it was actually what I really, the cinematography is phenomenal. Um, I didn't realize the under, well, I knew it was supposed to have some underlying spiritual stuff to it, which it did. It's not Christian by any means, by any standards. This is not a Christian movie, zero. Um, but I did see a lot of the underlying, um, spiritual stuff that I don't necessarily agree with. Some of it was from Indian based. Some of it was, um, Middle Eastern religious views that I don't agree with. Um, but I'm always a person you got the right to that was incorporated in New Age philosophy that was incorporated in the movie. I went there mainly because of the sci-fi content. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. Um, I love sci-fi movies. Actually, there was a sci-fi series, I have to see if I can remember it, that was really good. It was only one season series. And I found it on, I can't remember which channel it was under. I'll figure it out and then I'll let you guys know. But I found it on here and it was a really, really... It's a very, very good um, sci-fi series. So I went ahead and uh, kind of watched that and enjoyed it. But I love sci-fi. Like right now I'm watching, uh, I guess it's a new version of the Hardy Boys on, uh, is this P Hulu? It's a new version of the, I think it's like 2021, 22 of the Hardy Boys. So I'm catching that a lot. There was not a lot of stuff to watch. A lot of what we watch now is just trash. It's trash and just trash. I can't even say anything. The meaning's not there. A bunch, bunch of people that's about them. I can't. I, my, the entertainment is not there. Anyway, y'all, I want y'all to be blessed. I'm about to get my butt off of here. I got, Like I said, I got some homework to do. I am sleepy. Um, I need to get and do, do a little refrigerator clean out, do some homework, and then obviously probably going to go to bed. And pray this week goes by fast um, as far as the work week. Uh, the weekend is cool. I need to hit the lottery, y'all, because I'm gonna be I'd be retired tomorrow. I need a windfall of money because I would be retired tomorrow. We're done. Um, and I'd bless a lot of people so they could retire. Cause I would never ever I couldn't use that much money. Plus, I'm not that greedy. So I would bless other folk. And I, I really would. I'd donate a good chunk of it and then I'd bless other people and make sure I just had enough to survive and live and be able to do travel around without a bunch of drama. Anyway, y'all, two and two be blessed. Peace. Like, thumbs up, share it out, and if a bunch of people disappear, <laughs> I'm just saying. And they tell you it was aliens, it was not aliens. Don't take the mark and read a Bible. If you need food, I got Bibles, food, all that here in this house. Y'all can have it because I'm hoping to be out on the first boat. If you don't know Jesus, get to know him. God bless you. Two and two, peace.